Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig with Let's Learn This Together, and today we're going to be covering the sprite editor, which includes how you manage and edit and bring into your game all of the images and sprites that you'll be using with it. So things we're going to be talking about today are how to add images to your game, creating sprites from multiple frames, setting the sprite origin, setting the collision mask, and the frame length in 2.3 specifically. Let's go ahead and dive in. What you see on my screen is the sprite editor. To open it up, you just double click on the sprite. I have S idle one open right now, but I could open up S walk, S climb, so on and so forth. These are all the sprite editor. So let's go ahead and enlarge one and take a look at this. On the left here, on the top left, we have the name of the sprite. So we can rename this to whatever we want. Normally for a sprite, you give it a prefix of an S, SPR, S underscore, whatever the case is. Just remember that the assets in your game can't have the same name. So if you have a sprite called player, you can't have an object called player. So give it a prefix like S. Then you have actually changing and editing the image down here. So we have the size of this image, which is 73 pixels wide and 123 pixels high. So we can scale this image up or down in pixels or in percent. We can have it interpolate if we want, which is just going to change how it decides to scale it. Or we can resize the canvas itself to be larger or smaller if we wanted to add more to our image here. I'm not going to do that right now because this looks really good the way it is. If we wanted to edit the image, we can click on this and this will take us into the image editor, which if you want to learn all about that, check out the image editor video. Then we also have the ability to import, which is to add more sprites into your game. So you can import it here, or if you already have the sprite you want, you can bring that up in a folder and you can drag that into your game. So I'm going to show you a couple different ways of adding the images. Import is the first one, which will just take you right into your file explorer or finder, and you can navigate through to bring in what you want, or you can find exactly what you're looking for and drag it into your game. If you drag it into a folder, it will be added to that folder, and it comes in with the name that you've given it. So this is a second idle animation for our player here, and you can see it comes in with that name, it comes in with the right size and everything. So if I wanted to then drag the rest of these, I could put them all inside of here, and now I have a fully animated sprite. This one's a little quick, but we can adjust the playback of the frames per second up here to 15, which makes it look a little better. We can give it a new name called S Idle 2, and then we have a brand new sprite. Now, when you're bringing in a sprite, you do need to consider the origin. So for all of the other sprites in this game, which is the YoYo -Yo platform demo, they have a custom origin right here, pretty much in the bottom center. And what that means is when you're placing your sprite into your game as an object, or even just as the sprite itself, whether you're creating it or manually placing it in the room, that origin is where it's going to snap to in that game. So let's take a look at what this means when we have different kinds of origins. I'll open up the first room in this and we'll zoom in here. And I'm just gonna go to an asset layer here and I'm gonna drag in the S idle sprite. Now, if you look, you can see that these two do not quite line up. So this is S idle two. If I bring in S idle one, this one does perfectly line up with where it's supposed to be on the ground because the origin for this sprite is set on the bottom. So when you create it or when you're moving it around in your room, it's set to be exactly how it is created in this room with the grid height and everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete these and we'll go back to our sprite editor. So what that means is if you have different sprites with different origins, like a top left and a custom sprite near the bottom center, you're going to run into issues where if you're moving around or changing between sprites, it's gonna look like that sprite or object is warping from place to place, even just a little bit, and it's going to cause some frustration. So whatever origin you decide, there's not one that's necessarily better or right for any specific kind of game, but whatever origin you decide to use, just make sure you use that same origin. And you can tell what it is by coming up here, you can choose from the presets, or you can drag the little origin cursor 
and you can put it right where you want it to go. And you can see here that as I move the origin cursor, it tells me what it is up here. So I know that I want it actually at 31 and 120. I'm gonna go ahead and just type those values in there. And then this idle animation will function exactly as it should. Now, if you have a sprite sheet in your game, you can also bring that in and convert that to frames. So if I bring in a full sprite sheet, which is something you'll probably find in a lot on the internet, or maybe you've custom ordered art and this is what you've got, Game Maker can convert this to frames for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click and open up the image editor inside of here. And all I'm gonna do is click on image, convert to frames. Now by default, it's gonna have the number of frames at one, the frames per row at one, the frame width, I think at 32, and the frame height at 32. So we need to change this to fit exactly what we've got. So if I press the center fit, it'll blow this up a little bit. Now I know that this sprite is 73 pixels wide and 123 pixels high. And if we zoom in, you can see that there is no space between these at all. So I have seven frames I want to bring in and they are all on the same row. If they were not all in the same row, let's say we had a couple different rows here, then you would just change how many are there and then you can import those in. So I'm gonna change that back to seven, click on convert. It's gonna ask you if you want to do this because it's gonna replace the existing frames. And then voila, we have this new idle animation brought in, cut out for us nice and neat. Another really awesome way to bring in your sprites is if you have them in a strip in one image and you add the suffix strip and the number to it. So that same player idle strip which came in as one image, even though we had to convert it, we can have it Game Maker automatically do that for us. We have player idle, and this time it says strip seven. So if we bring this in, Game Maker is going to be able to tell by the number and the suffix strip that it is a strip of images, and if it can equally divide it among that number, it's going to do that, and voila, you get a ready to go animated sprite. You can see down here, each one of those frames have been made into an individual frame. And what's really cool about this is there are several things you can do. The first one is you can actually move these frames around. So if I wanted to take a frame from, I don't know, let's say the S climb, I could copy this or cut it by pressing Control C or Command C, and I could come and put this in this one. Now, this would look really strange, and it's also really fast, but you can move frames around different sprites if you wanted to. And you can also extend the length of any specific frame inside of your game. So here it looks a little weird, but let's say on this, if we wanted the character to look like they're taking a very deep breath, we could extend this fourth frame out a couple of ways by clicking on it and dragging out. Now you can see that it actually takes up three frames inside of here. So if we press play, it looks like they're taking a moment to breathe and you can extend any frame you want inside of any sprite. And then if you don't like it, you can simply change it right back. And now let's talk about the collision mask. So I'm gonna go back to S walk and let's open up the collision mask here on the side. And this now shows us what the collision mask that the game uses for this character. And if we move around, this is the whole collision mask for the entire sprite. The mode here at the top says we want to do full image and the type is a rectangle. What that means is it's gonna calculate the maximum height and width of our collision mask. So even though this specific frame is inside the collision mask, the last one extends all the way over here and maybe this one extends all the way over here and some of them the player is higher. So it calculates that and it sets the collision mask to be full. That is one way of doing it. You also have automatic, you also have manual, which means you can come in here and set a custom collision mask for your character or object or whatever it is. A lot of times custom collision masks can be very helpful. You might want a circular rock to actually have a square collision mask that way it moves along the ground significantly easier. And then other times you might only want to cover part of your player because you don't want to actually cover all the way out here if you're checking for damage in an action game because that's a little unfair if they're taking hits even though they're not there during that frame. So 
On that case, you can click on automatic, you can do precise, or you can do precise per frame, which is gonna calculate the collision mask exactly based on the frame that it's in. Now this takes a little more processing power, so you don't wanna use it for every single sprite in your game, but for the ones that really matter, it can make a big difference. And then we also have the tolerance of the collision mask, which as we change it, you can see that it is go getting smaller and smaller because it's not wanting to expand more than where it is absolutely certain it needs to be. And if you bring it all the way down, it actually just disappears. So play with the tolerance carefully because you can actually completely remove your collision mask if you're not careful. And then the last thing down here is when it's set to manual, you can actually come in and tell it exactly where it needs to be with numbers. And this also tells you how wide and how tall your collision mask is by doing a little bit of math. If the left is at 20 and the right is at 90, then your collision mask is 70 pixels wide and the same idea for top to bottom. This can be really helpful when you want to set a specific size for your collision mask or you want to check it inside of your game or use some code to get at it, you can double check that your collision mask is the right size here. There are also a few other settings in the sprite editor now, such as texture settings, which we're not gonna worry about the texture maps in this video, but they are here. And then we also have nine slice, which this is used for cutting up a sprite into nine different slices, which then can be shrunk or expanded without the loss of quality. This is primarily used for message boxes and UI elements, so I wouldn't use it on a character unless you really wanna try and get creative. And that's everything you need to know about the Sprite Editor in Game Maker Studio. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, and as I like to say, keep making, keep learning, and I'll talk to you later.